Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to be talking about Z transforms. And uh, specifically, we're going to be taking the Z transforms of two functions. And those functions, the first one, is, which we're just going to call x1 of n. Remember that these are discrete valued functions, not continuous functions. Um, x1 of n is equal to gamma to the n minus 1 u of n minus 1, where u is the Heaviside function. So we would like to take the z-transform of this, and in order to do that, we need to know what the z-transform is. Well, if we have x1 of n, x1 of z is just the summation from n equals negative infinity up to infinity of x of n z to the negative n. So if this looks familiar, it's because it's very, very similar to a Laplace transform. Um, they're actually related by sampling and by evaluating the Laplace transform at uh, z equals e to the negative st, where t is, camp is uh, your sampling time. So this is basically a, dis a small different uh, discrete evaluation of the Laplace transform, or an evaluation of the Laplace transform for discrete valued functions. Um, so for this first one here, uh, we're just going to directly apply this formula. And so in doing that, we have the summation from n equals negative infinity to infinity of gamma to the n minus 1, u of n minus 1, z to the negative n. So uh, obviously that is the z transform, but we would like this in a closed form solution or something we can actually do some algebra with as opposed to uh, an infinite series. So let's see if we can simplify this a bit. So the first step is to realize that the Heaviside function makes every one of these terms in the sum end 0 before n equals 1. So equivalently, we can write this as the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of gamma to the n minus 1, z to the negative n. So all we did there was we just said, OK, everything before, zero, before 1 is 0, so we don't even need to count that in the summation. Now, what we need to do is try to get this into a geometric series. So this kind of already looks like a geometric series, but it would be nice if it was in some form of just a common ratio to the n, because we know that the summation over those from n equals 0 to infinity is equal to 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. Actually, it's the first term, a0 over 1 minus the common ratio. But in a case like this, the first term is simply 1. So if we can get this to look like that, we can apply this formula and we'll be on our way to having a nice closed form solution. So let's do what we call a change of variable here. So instead of using n here, we're just going to write that m is equal to n minus 1. Or equivalently, n is equal to m plus 1. So the only things we can pull out of this integral here, or this summation, sorry, are things that do not depend on n. So we're going to make this change a variable here and see if anything can get pulled out to get us to this nice form. So moving over to here, we have the summation from n equal, from m now equals 0 to infinity because infinity minus 1 is still infinity. Um, and we change this variable here from n minus 1 to just m, so it's gamma to the m. And then n here becomes z to the negative parentheses m plus 1. So this is z to the negative m times z to the negative 1. z to the negative 1 does not depend on m. So we can pull it out of this summation. So we just get a z inverse here times the summation from m equals 0 to infinity of gamma 
times z to the inverse to the m. All I did here was once I pulled out the z inverse, I had a gamma to the m and a z to the negative m, so I grouped those terms and put them all to the same m. Now these guys here are constants with respect to m, so we have this in our nice form here, which is our geometric series formula. So applying our geometric series formula to this here, we have z inverse times 1 over 1 minus gamma z inverse. And so now if we multiply this by z over z, we get a cancellation here, and finally end up with 1 over z minus gamma. So this is your very nice closed form solution for the z transform of gamma to the negative times sorry, gamma to the negative uh, n minus 1, gamma to the n minus 1, u of n minus 1. Sorry about that. Um, this is the end solution to the z transform and is much easier to work with uh, than that infinite summation. So the next one we're going to do is a cosine function and we're going to take a second to erase so that you don't have this clutter on the board. Um, see you guys in a second. Hey guys, thanks for coming back. So we have one more Z transform to take here, and this one's a little bit more involved, but I'm going to go through the basic parts a little faster. So if you got the last one, this is going to involve a lot of that, plus a little bit of algebra. So the thing we're interested in here is X2 of N is equal to cosine of An times U of N. So this one is going to involve something very similar, but we have to take an advantage here because if we just try to apply uh, a summation of a cosine times it, we're not going to ever get a geometric series. But if we can uh, write this in its hyperbolic form, uh, we can get actually two geometric series and work with those. So if we instead write this as e to the ja plus e to the negative ja, n all divided by 2 times u of n is much easier to work with in terms of the series. So we're going to start this over here. So we have taking the z transform x2 of z. So just applying our formula we have 1 half the summation from n equals 0 to infinity because again everything before times 0 is 0 due to the heavy side function and we have e to the j a z inverse to the n. Hope you're able to see that. All I did was take e to the j a and the 1 half here, pulled out the 1 half, put e to the j a and then we have the z to the negative n there and I pulled out the n from both of these. And then we have to add on the one-half summation from n equals zero to infinity again. Uh, sorry if that's a little bit off the screen. Um, and we have e to the negative j a z to the negative one all to the n. So these are two geometric series, which means we know their solutions. And the solutions to these are 1 half times, if we plug in 0 for n here, we're just going to get 1. So it's 1 over 1 minus e to the j a z inverse plus 1 half 1 over 1 minus e to the negative j a z inverse. And writing things in z inverse while appealing for uh, people who work in DSP is not really great for algebra. So we're going to change this to just be a polynomial in z and not a polynomial in z inverse. So we end up with 1 half times z 
over z minus e to the j a plus z over z minus e to the negative j a. So our next step, uh, well you could leave it like this. Uh, obviously this is the z transform, but we have some imaginary numbers in here and it would be nice if we could get a closed form solution without any imaginary numbers in them, considering this was a real valued function, it would be nice if we had a real valued z transform. So we're going to do some math on this to see if we can get it into a nicer form. And so in order to do that, we're going to get a common denominator for this uh, for these two fractions. So we have one half z times z minus e to the negative j a plus z. So we have a z in both of these terms of the summation. So we're going to pull this out actually. So we have z times e to the negative j a all over z minus e to the negative j a times z to the minus e to the j a and over here we had z over 2. Close parentheses. So now we can just combine these terms on top here. So we end up with z over 2 and we have 2z times uh, minus e to the negative j a minus e to the j a all divided by z squared and now if we do we're going to foil the bottom here and just write it out in a uh, uh, foiled form, I guess we'll call it. So it's ne e negative e to the j a times z minus e to the negative j a times z. So it's uh, I have a plus in the middle there, all of that times z. And then this guy multiplied by this guy is simply 1. So, if you can see here, you might notice already, very similar to what we had um, for our cosine expansion here, we have an e to the j a plus an e to the negative j a in the top and bottom here. So we can see if we can get a uh, cosine answer out of this. So, and that would get rid of our imaginary numbers and make them all real. So, moving on, we have... Uh, we can take this one half and use it for this summation. So we're just going to have z times, um, we need to pull the one half in everywhere. So we have z times z um, minus cosine of a. And then, oh, this needs to be a bigger parenthesis. And then on the bottom, we have a z squared. Uh, if we have this guy here, this is actually, so we have z squared, and then we have to subtract off 2 cosine of a times z plus 1. And with that, we have our closed form solution with only real values. And so writing this down explicitly, we have that x2 of z is equal to z squared minus z cosine a all divided by z squared minus 2 cosine a z plus 1. And so that finally is the z transform of your cosine with frequency a. And so looking at these for specific values of a, uh, you might want to just try to plug these in for yourself and see if you can reduce it anymore. Um, some interesting values of a might be a equals uh, pi, pi over 2, 
uh, pi over 4. Try plugging in these and seeing what you end up, and maybe try a 0 as well. Try plugging these in and see what you end up getting and see if they make sense to you. For instance, cosine of pi n for integer values of n is just negative 1 to the n, so that might be something interesting to look at. Um, for instance, uh, 0, cosine of 0n will always be 1, so that's just a heavy side function, so technically this should reduce to what the heavy side function's z transform is in the end. So uh, try to plug in some of these values for yourself and see what you end up getting. Um, I hope this all makes sense. A lot of Z transforms pretty much are just applying our geometric series formula and then uh, doing some algebra until we get a nice closed form solution. Uh, the last thing I would like to talk about is radiuses or radii of convergence rather. Um, and so what that means is in order to apply this geometric series formula, we have a condition that negative 1 has to be less than R has to be less than 1. So, in order to do this, uh, we need to take a look at these things here. So, we need e to the j a z inverse, the magnitude of this, to be less than 1. Or rather, z has to be greater than e to the j a. And so e to the ja, whatever that is, um, has to be less than z in order for this to converge to a, ver to a nice value, or rather the, uh, the magnitude of it, um, and the magnitude of z. So this is important because if this is not true, we have a different closed form solution, um, and perhaps we'll go over that in another video. Uh, we'll talk about the radiuses of convergences, radii of convergences for Z transform. So uh, I hope you guys learned something here and have a nice day.